Welcome to John Gillespie's Waters and Woods. We're gonna do some fall fishing for some walleyes with Captain Brett Jolly. Yeah. <laughs> neon, neon. These fish are all in our harbors. Close to 14 there. Are you having fun? I'm having a blast. Fleet Farm presents John Gillespie's Waters and Woods. Fleet Farm, the ultimate fishing headquarters. Yes, folks, a beautiful October day, and we're fishing with Captain Brett Jolly on the west side of the Bay of Green Bay. And, Joel, one thing I want to talk about, you know, you get into October like this, yeah. and a lot of guys don't think walleye fishing's any good anymore. Well, yeah, you know, everybody's out here in the summer, and this time of year, the boat landings are empty, but the fishing's really good. And are you getting nice size fish? Yeah, a lot of those 20, 22s, some bigger ones, too. We've been getting a few that are pushing 30 inches. Oh, really? And yeah. a lot of action? It's been pretty good. You know, some days are better than others, but uh, it's been decent. You know, when we come back from the commercial break, we're going to talk a little bit about a system that you developed out here. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's called Slip Bobber Deep Water Fishing. And you're going to show yeah. us how to do that? You betcha. All right. Hey, folks, we got Henry Abbott aboard and Blake. We'll show you what we're using and how we're using it. All of that coming up right after this. Folks, here's your chance to win a 2023 Wolverine X2 XTR from Yamaha. One lucky winner takes home this incredible machine. This side-by-side -side has maximum comfort, power steering, factory installed winch, and a full dump box. Enter today by going to GillespieFishing.com, click on the Wolverine X2 XTR sweepstakes banner. This sweepstakes is brought to you by your Yamaha dealer and Fleet Farm. Meet Chris McGillis of McGillis Weimer, experienced personal injury lawyer. John, you, you've got to know me. I mean, I'm a really passionate person. Everyone on my staff is, everyone on my team is. Um, you know, we are passionate about what we do. Helping somebody out, uh, protecting them, doing everything we can to help tell their story, to make sure they're treated fairly with integrity and with respect, and get a fair resolution, whatever that is for the client. I mean, that's extremely important to us. That's really all that matters. Folks, I'll tell you what, Amsoil is the sportsman's best friend. They've got a product to keep all your machines running well. Pete, my bow mount is sticky, it makes noise, and Amsoil has a product to fix that. Yeah, and you should have been using it. Silicone spray is recommended for the shaft and the belt on these trolling motors. You see this belt, this is what makes the motor travel up and down. So what you want to do is spray the whole shaft itself. Get a good coating on that. You want to spray the belt here on the back side as well. Once it dries, it lubricates, and it also protects the belt itself. It keeps it from cracking and drying out, and it also resists dust and dirt. One other thing, these locking pins recommend a little bit of uh, Amsoil synthetic water-resistant grease. Those are two things that are just going to make this motor work much more smoother and last a lot longer. Again, it's called? Amsoil Silicone Spray. Go to Amsoil.com. Amsoil.com. Hey, welcome back, folks. October walleye fishing on the Bay of Green Bay with Captain Brett Jolly. And you have figured out a pretty neat system out here that's unique, especially for this time of year. Yeah. What you're doing is using a slip bobber. Then you got two big sinkers. And how in the heck did you find leeches this time of year? <laughs> Luckily, I know a guy. Um, they're very hard to find. Most bait shops are out, but he's been keeping them alive all summer. And leeches have been the magic bait out here? They've been really Really good. We've been getting a few on crawlers, a few on some bigger minnows, but uh, leeches have been the best. Okay, now we're deep water fishing anywhere between 25 and 30 feet using slip bobbers. Yep. So the first thing that you do is you use like a little ice fishing depth bomb yep. and you find the bottom. Find the bottom. I set my bobbers about three feet off the bottom. Um, keeps them away from the gobies and any other junk fish that are down there. And those walleyes will come right up and grab it. And you guys are out here doing all different kinds of things plastics and and hard baits and yeah. they're not catching fish you know they're getting a few but it's been tough um, so these fish have just not been really active with the kind of odd fall weather we've had um, so something's sitting right in front of their face they can hardly resist it so what I do is sit on my butt and watch the bobber just watch the bobber 
Whoa, no, no. there we go. <laughs> hey, Blake, how long was that out there? That literally was out there for like one second. Oh, here he comes. Here he comes. That is amazing, Captain Brett yeah, Jolly. That was the first bobber I put in the water. We only have one rod in the water, folks, and there is our Woody. first walleye of the day. Oh, Blake, that is a gorgeous <laughs> eating that fish. That is a perfect eater. And fit. look at how nice and dark the color is from the fish being around rocks, right, Jolly? Yeah, yeah, it's clear water, rocks, you know, so they're real dark up here. Wow, that's a great start to the day. What did that take? Five seconds? No, we <laughs> literally just shot you so know open. how to use the stuff <laughs> right. or whatever you got one rod out uh, that's impressive Brett. yeah yeah it's uh, been a pretty good bite yes. he he inhaled that leech yeah henry have it now all right henry he this is it? only a couple minutes he dropped after it. mine did he drop it yep, yep. Uh, henry. oh henry are you sad yeah Bobber's down, bobber's down. Oh, there he is, Jolly. There, oh nice. my gosh. This one actually feels like a pretty good walleye, buddy. Yeah, I actually put a red tail chub on that one. Now that is interesting. Okay, buddy, this one yep. feels really good. Okay, Jowl, let's see what we got here, buddy. Wow, he's fighting good, man. Wow, is he ever fighting good. Oh yeah, that's a oh, nice one. Oh yeah, whoa, Ooh. took some line out. Oh, oh. nice. <laughs> Fish. Holy cow. This is really a beautiful walleye, yeah. buddy. This takes us back to springtime here. <laughs> and this is so interesting, folks. The fish just don't want a fast-moving bait. No, they just want everything sitting right in front of their face. They're they're kind of lazy right now for some reason. It's it's been like this for a couple weeks. And you know, we were doing this up in Canada with slip bobbers a couple of month ago. I told you about yeah. that. And you could see they didn't want a fast-moving bait, but you cast a jig and a leech or a jig and minnow out there, and it just sits there. They'll circle it and circle it, and then boom. Is yep. that the same <laughs> deal? That's the same thing that's going on here right now. That's a beauty. Hold them off. Now that's a solid 24, right? Yeah. That's a good fish. They fought too, huh? Oh, yeah, they fight hard. Got a bobber down. Okay. Got to wait until it gets tight. Right there. Oh. oh, swing and a miss, play. Oh. oh, play. That one was down for a long I know. time. Too. Oh, it... oh, you broke it off. Broke off. Dang it. So, what you want to do, Brett, is have her tighten up the line and miss the fish, right? Right. Ooh, this one's staying down, Dad. All right, Blake. All right. Isn't that fun on those light rods? Oh, so much fun. And Jolly, are we fishing rocks or uh, um, mud? We're fishing kind of the edge of rock and mud. Okay. Um, there's there's some rocks around here, but fish are just kind of scattered and not biting great. <laughs> Well, maybe. Wow, I mean, this is such a relaxing way to fish. Oh, yeah. Oh, my oh, gosh. Oh, boy. <laughs> that was cool. Just that take her nice and easy. Okay, yeah, we don't want to lose this one, Blake. You got fairly light line on there. Okay. Nice. Here he comes. Ooh, that's a good one. Good oh, fish. Oh, that's a big one. Oh, it is? Yeah. Okay, Blake, don't lose this fish. <laughs> there we go. Oh, yeah. oh Blake. <laughs> Wait do you see the size of this walleye, Brett Jolly. That's a big one. That is a gorgeous Holy fish. Holy cow. Blake, way wow. to go. That, that is a big boy. little eagle claw hook. Yeah. Wow. Was yep. that on a leech or a minnow? Yeah, it was a leech. That's wow. incredible, Brett. Yeah. That's I wow. mean, look at the size of that look fish. Look at that fish. <laughs> is that pushing 30, buddy? I'm going to say 27, 28, maybe. Oh, my goodness. That I was that fun. that bite. It's oh. <laughs> a good one. <laughs> wow. We definitely deserved that. We had yeah. a little lull. And... Oh, we'll get them. Yes. Hey, Brett, I did want to ask you one question, though, buddy. See. I tried casting, Henry did too, for yep. about a half hour, not even a sniff. So the slow moving, just hanging in front of them, we talked about it yep. before, but that's crucial. They're not real active, so just keeping that bait right in front of their faces is getting them to go. And you think they're on the edge of the rock and mud? Yeah, that's exactly where they are. And how deep are we fishing? Uh, we're in about 20. 20 feet? Yeah. I mean, look at it. Is that common, buddy? Uh, there's a lot of big fish in the bay. <laughs> oh, boy. That's crazy cool. I think that's your biggest walleye of the year. Oh, I think so, too. Are you going to do a hold-up for yeah. us? Yeah. <laughs> Let's see that. I'll, Blake likes to hold her big fish, you know? We want to get this Whoa, one back in the water. Yeah, there Good you go, job. Blake. That's awesome. Good job. All right. All right, we're going to put that one back. Okay. Nice fish. 
Now the catch and release on those, Brett, do you have like a formula or? Uh, just anything over 23 I always put back. Usually 22 most days. Well, that was awesome, buddy. That was a trophy fish. And not a leech instead of a minnow, right? Yep, that was a leech. A couple of things about fishing on the bay here. This is very clear water. Mm -hmm. And I know that you love Seaguar. I do. And your leader material that you use out here has got to be strong enough to handle these big fish. Yep, but clear enough where they don't see the line. So I'm using 10 pound Invesex um, for all my leader material. And it's strong. The fish don't see it and it, it just works great. So what you're doing is using your Smackdown as your main line, the Correct. braid. Yep. And then you put like a six foot leader of what's it called again? Invesex. By Seaguar. Correct. And the fish can't see it, but again, it's strong enough. Exactly. And the other thing that you have here uh, is zebra mussels, and that's yeah. why you want to use a, a strong line. Yeah, you know, it, those zebra mussels cut the line up, you get all kinds of nicks in your lines, you got to retie, but, but the, the Seaguar holds up really well to that. Breaking news from Fleet Farm. Check out this deal. Save $20 on the Muddy 16 MP trail camera combo on sale for $49.99. We are fishing the Bay of Green Bay out of Oconnell, Wisconsin. A two hour drive from Milwaukee, three and a half hours from Chicago, and four and a half hours from Minneapolis. I'll be your beast of burden. A friend in unfriendly situations. Stumps, roots, rocks. Throw me in and watch me swim. Mother Nature may be tough, I'm tougher. I'll take you with grit and guts, beat, glitz, and glamour, where the fish are worth the fight. If you ask me, the bigger the question marks, the better the quest. Folks, you, you see us talking about the Johnson Pump washdown kit every week. On a charter boat, pontoon boat, any boat, it's really a great thing to have. Now, you guys get a lot of blood on your hands, we so do. what do you do? John, this washdown pump right here that Johnson just spray it right off. And obviously, you got quite a bit of blood on the back deck, and this thing will take care of it. So you actually use it while we're out here fishing so the customers don't get blood and everything on them. Exactly. And again, that's the Johnson Pump washdown kit. You yep. love it? Love it. Eagle Claw, the pick of the week. The Eagle Claw treble hook is a hook that you can replace on all of your crankbaits. Eagle Claw, the only hook made right here in the USA. Got a bow! Oh, nicely done! So you gotta give them like a second and tighten yeah. up the line. Yeah, you wanna let them eat it and then get the line tight and a nice sweep and hook set. Is this is nice one too? Yeah, it feels decent. Well, I'll tell you what, it's getting a little wavy out here, buddy. And Brian, I think we can get up there and see this fish now, pal. I'm not sure. Is it a good one, John? Yeah, it's not bad. All right, buddy. And again, folks, I'll, don't put too much pressure on these fish, yeah, right? Yeah, nice and easy. Okay. Was that leech or minnow there? Uh, that was a leech. Okay, have you seen them? Yeah, it's a walleye. Oh, good. Oh, yeah. There we go. Beautiful. Look at the average size of these fish. It's just absolutely amazing, Brett Jolly. Yeah, they're and, nice. And, you know, one thing I want to talk about, you know, we're getting uh, some pretty good waves building up out it's here on the bay. It's getting pretty rough, yeah. And, you know, in the old days, we'd throw out a big anchor. But the Minn Kota spot lock, how big of a savior is that? Oh, it's amazing. I mean, I've got that longer 70-inch shaft on this one. Right. And it'll hold me in three four footers no problem but i mean and we're staying stationary and you got to be stationary when you're slip bobber absolutely fishing. you know it, we, we lock in let those baits drift back um i'll use the jog feature on my on my bow mount where it'll move me five feet at a time oh, okay. so i just kind of bump around and work work the whole area and that's called the jog yeah system. the jog feature you just bump a bump it backwards and it slips you back five sure feet. beats picking up anchors doesn't it oh, yeah. pull that fish out i mean and that that would you say is about average Right? Yeah, that's an average fish. Now, when you look at the rest of October and November, Brett, I know things change and the fish move, yeah. but that's when you and I start going up in the Fox River and University Bay and that? Yeah, yeah, those fish will really congregate down there in the lower bay and the river, and that can be some excellent fishing down there. Yeah, you and I try to do it every year, yeah. either late November or December, and we have a blast.
that's, that's a lot of fun. Yeah, hold that out again. Now that beautiful after. Look at the colors. You know, that's what I love too. Yep. You know. All right, Henry. There we go, John. Hey, hey, I'll tell you what, Henry. These waves are building, and it's getting pretty rough out here. We may have to go in and do some perch fishing when you land this one. I'd be okay with that. Here he is. Is he coming, Brad? He's getting there. Okay, yeah. buddy. Good one. Yeah, I'll tell you what. It's these waves are building out here. Keep them coming, buddy. Almost there. Okay, we getting close here, John. It's a little ways down yet. Ooh. It's a good fish, whatever wow. it is. Yeah, that is awesome. Oh, look at that rod, Ben. And don't miss this one, Henry. Don't miss him. We're trying. Ooh, there we go. Good one. That is a beautiful walleye, Henry Abbott. Ooh. Look at this. Hey, Henry. You know, people say walleyes don't fight. Would you agree? <laughs> they fight. I mean, that was a wonderful oh, fight. That was, too. Let's see, Jal. Nice fish. Yeah, that is a beautiful walleye. And seriously, though, buddy, these waves are building. It's and, getting pretty rough. And yeah. I know there's a small craft advisory out for later today. Yep. So we'll stick this out for another half hour, but there's other options? Yeah, we could go get perch. They've been up shallow. Um, there's some other rock piles up shallow we can check out, some weeds. If we've got options. Well, you were right, though, when I called you the other day, and, and you said that these are big fish. They are yeah. big fish. Oh, they're beautiful fish, and this has really been the only way to catch them. Really? I, yeah. I, yeah, exactly. I saw some other boats out here jigging. Never saw a net. Nope. That's this is the this is the deal. And would this system work on inland lakes too? Small? Well, of course. That, that's where slip bobber shine is on inland lakes. It's very rare for anybody to use them out here, um, but it's it's effective. And again, it puts the bait in the in the bite zone for right. a long time. They're just sitting. That bait's just sitting right in front of them. They look it over and they look it over and finally they eat it. Hold that up. Nice fish, Henry Abbott, the man of the hour. <laughs> what do you think there, Big Hen? It's beautiful. You could do this all day. <laughs> One of my favorite dinner meals is spaghetti and meatballs, and I thought of a way to make it even more delicious. I decided to use a Johnsonville rope sausage. It's premium pork, and it's already cooked. All you have to do is heat it up on the pan until it's golden brown, add it to your very favorite pasta recipe, and you're ready to go. Mmm, let's give it a try. Mmm, so good. Johnsonville Rope Sausage. Find it at your favorite retailer today. Hey, 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 now it's Blake's turn. Yeah. I don't know if this is here. Oh. Is he here already, Brad? Yep. Hey, he's here already. Oh, Almost. Okay. Man, they fight? I know, it is amazing. And uh, it's so fun to watch these slip bobbers go down, too. Yeah. You see them, guys? Almost. Okay, Jalaru, that on the leech or the minnow? That's a leech again. So the vast majority. Ooh, there's a nice walleye, Brett Jolly. Oh, yeah. That's another beautiful Woo. fish. Blake, can you believe the average size on these? No, this is crazy, especially this time of year. These are very beautiful fish. I mean, that's a solid four pounder Ooh, or it's more. A, it's a nice fish, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's not wrong with that. Nice fish, nice build on that, and I'm glad we're catching them in these waves. <laughs> well, you figure in the wintertime, these, you know, we, we were catching these fish, obviously, a lot closer in, mm -hmm. in April, May, and June. Right. But in October, they migrate more towards the middle? They, like midsummer, they start moving towards the middle. You, we're catching a lot of fish in July further out, uh, deep suspended fish, and anywhere from 20 to 30 feet of water. Another thing we should mention is the shad spawn in the fall here on the bay. Right. So they'll spawn in the Fox River. Yep. And like late October, November, even into December before it ices up, yeah, you can do really well, right? Oh yeah, those those walleyes follow that bait all the way down in the lower bay and up the river, and uh, it's fantastic fishing. And you can see the shad where the shad are by where the seagulls are in the river, yeah, right? Yeah, or you can see them dimpling on the surface, and the walleyes are and right then, there. And how long from now is that? About do you think? Oh, uh, let's see. No, probably mid another three weeks. Yeah, you know, yeah. We just need the water to get a little colder. Yeah, hold that out. Yeah. <laughs> Nice Blake, fish. are you having a nice time? I'm having a blast. I mean, this flip bobbers a, and walleye. Yeah, what a <laughs> relaxing way to fish. <laughs> and Brent, how many people are doing this out here? Uh, None. My my one buddy, and other than that, no, that's no nobody else is doing it. <laughs> what an effective way to fish, yep. really yeah, right. is. And it's presentation, and it's just being still, right? Yep. Those fish just don't want to move right now. 
You know, one unique thing that we have found today is the color of yeah. the hook makes a difference. Now, you started out with the purple eagle claw, right? Yep. And those are laser sharps? Laser sharps, yep. And then you went to? The chartreuse. And the chartreuse? That's what we're catching most of our fish on. Are you telling me seriously that a hook color can make the difference? Absolutely. I mean, some days they want orange, some days they want pink, some days it's purple, but today it's definitely chartreuse. Okay, and you believe in the colored hooks? Oh, absolutely. It's now time to announce this week's winners of the Fleet Farm John Gillespie's Waters and Woods 2023 Fishing Contest. This week's first winner is Jeffrey Bolecki of Hobart, Indiana, caught the 16 inch crappie on Hamlin Lake using a Kalen's crappie scrub. Mike Stoll of Pingree Grove, Illinois, caught this 24 inch bass on a local pond using a power bait. Jennifer Foss of Cedarburg, Wisconsin, got this 49-inch muskie in Ontario using a spinnerbait. Andy Swig of Oregon, Wisconsin, caught this 46-inch northern on Red Lake using a raider. And this week's first kid winner is Jack Bremen Camp of Mequon, Wisconsin, caught this 24-inch largemouth bass on the Gebhardt's Farms Pond using a crankbait. And Jack Sherman of McGuanago, Wisconsin, caught the 16-inch crappie on a lake in Waukesha County using a Senko. Each week, I shop online at FleetFarm.com to check out the latest deals. This week, save $20 on the Mary Step Mossy Oak Breakup Country Caretaker Ground Blind on sale for $99. 99 and save ten dollars on the wildlife research center four ounce estrus gold with scent reflex technology on sale for 14.99 Hey guys, seriously, it got so wavy out there, we really had to get close to yeah, shore. Yeah, it was with, rough. Yeah, with the small craft warning and whatnot. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, how was the ride at, over? I was a little scared, but I trust Jolly, and Henry was holding my hand, but <laughs> it was, <laughs> thank goodness it wasn't that long of a yeah, ride. It was actually it just bad. uncomfortable, yeah. right? Yeah, you know, it was, we were bouncing too hard. Those bobbers were bouncing up and down way too hard. Mm -hmm. uh, the fish just weren't going to bite. So, yeah. you know, we don't have a lot of time, but we decided to come in and try for a few perch. Yeah, the perch fishing's been okay lately. Um, it's been a rough year for perch fishing out here, but we've been doing okay lately, so hopefully we'll get a few up here and share of water and tell the folks you didn't have to change anything we're just using nope. the slip bobbers just shortened them up to seven feet instead of 20 feet and put on some crawlers and some small minnows captain brad's gonna <laughs> get our first perch yeah it's not a giant <laughs> but no that is not a giant but we got a very serious front coming through it's right pretty now nasty right now and yeah. we got wind shifts going on and i can feel that temperature dropping hold him up i mean that's that's a small one <laughs> that's a small but perch. you got to tell the folks what you've been doing this you know the last couple of years oh, out yeah. here. I mean there's 15, 16, 17 inch perch out here and this year was tough. It's it just an odd year for perch but the last couple of years we've been it's been fantastic. And the deal this year too is you're marking the fish, you're seeing them on your mega live yep. and you can't get them to bite. We'll catch three or four of them and then the whole school shuts down. Blake go up and be with Henry there. Oh, you got one? We got another Do not guy. lose that fish. Oh it's getting big they're getting bigger! Actually, that's not too bad there, Blake. That's an eater size. And you're using a minnow, right? I got a minnow on. We, yep. we have had just a massive wind shift. It was oh out of the God. south about a half hour ago. Now it's due west. And yep. uh, Jolly, do we have a chance at any of those bigger perch if we hang out? You know, they're here. Um, I know there's some bigger ones in here, but with these conditions, it's pretty tough. And perch seem to like nice days, and this isn't a nice day. Is that true? Do they like sunny days? I've done very, very well on nice days. Um, when it's high pressure and windy, perch fishing can be kind of tough. <laughs> 
Look, hey, look at there. this. Jolly's got us uh, on what have we got here, buddy. We got a little baby one. That's Folks, no, seriously, we're, we're finishing this show <laughs> because it it's got too storm. rough to fish out there in the middle of the lake. Yeah. And Jolly, I appreciate you hanging in there, buddy. But we got a shot at a bigger one. There's some in here. It's just, you know, these conditions are usually not great for perch. But, but we do a weekly show. Yeah. Yeah. No we'll, repeats. Uh... <laughs> Hold that one up. Do you want to thumb them? <laughs> oh, there I'm going to have to use my little finger. There you go, Wade. <laughs> <laughs> nice job, Jolly. <laughs> well, we're almost ready to go in, and Henry's bobber is down. Oh, Let's man. hope they're getting bigger. Oh, Henry! <laughs> now, Jolly, what do you think of that, Jolly? That's a dandy. That is a dandy. Now, when we get desperate, folks, this is what happens. Way to go, Henry! <laughs> Hey, I think we're kind of spinning our wheels out here, buddy. What do you got here? Another Whopper. Yeah. No, I, I, I think we, like I say, we're spinning our wheels. Yeah. And I guess one thing I want to talk about, um, you know, as you look towards the, the rest of October and November and even in December, there's some good fishing to be had. There's some fantastic fishing still coming. Um, you know, normally right now we would have had a good day, but this wind and high pressure can Kind of pushed us off the good spot where we were catching fish and not a lot of options on Green Bay when it blows hard. But one of yours and my favorite things to do is even in early December if it's not frozen is to fish the Fox River in yeah. Green Bay and they'll bite plastics, crankbaits, it's all hands-on yeah. fishing. Oh yeah, it's all jigging, casting, whatever and uh, it's a lot of fun. The skies Brett Jolly guides the Bay of Green Bay on a daily basis. For more information, give Brett a call. That phone number is 715-581-5678. 581-5678. Oh my gosh, look at the head on that. And look at that mouthful of weed. Look at that pipe. Are you having fun with the tip oh, Having a great time. Love Beaver Dan. Look at that, Blake! Holy Hi, cow! Oh my God. Look at that, Pike Blake! Oh my gosh! Look at the size of this pike! Oh my gosh! That is a trophy pike right there, pal. Oh man, is that gorgeous! Look at this guy, folks! This is a beauty! Oh, wait till you see the tummy on this guy! Pete, I'm getting too old for this. So, John, you haven't heard of Brian's Custom Steps? Oh, Pete, those are awesome. How can I get a set? Yeah, I love these big no-slip platforms, and they're made right here in Wisconsin. For more information on Brian's Custom Steps, call 920-315-0333. Wow, those walleyes were so fun to catch. And how long will they be biting here? Um, you know, it depends. I uh, could have a few more good weeks of fishing. Yep. Well, too bad that, you know, weather decided to come up on us, but it was yeah. very, very fun. So thanks for a fun day. No problem. It's my pleasure. And folks, that is our show for today. Please join us next week. I don't know where we're going to fish yet, but we'll find a place somewhere. Until then, I'm Blake Gillespie, hoping to see you enjoying John Gillespie's Waters and Woods. <laughs>